Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Plus Ultra Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Max Hall, and today me and Zach sit down and we do a character analysis on Madara Uchiha. So just a warning, there will be anime spoilers from Naruto Shippuden all the way up until the last episode. So if for some reason, five years later, you are not caught up on everything Naruto Shippuden and you don't want to be spoiled, go watch that before listening to this episode. Other than that, this episode is brought to you by First Step Apparel, the sweetest anime fitness t-shirts out there. Get yourself some, you know, Naruto, Dragon Ball Barbell, like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> My Hero Academia themed shirts, all the coolest shirts. Um, you get your Shonen Pump on. There's all kinds of great shirts there and they're keep continuing to come out with more cooler and cooler stuff as time goes on go check out first step apparel use code plus ultra 12 at discount and <laughs> at checkout for a 12 percent discount oh my goodness my words today enjoy the episode guys let's get started Okay, Zach, tell us a little bit about Madara. All right, so start off, Madara pretty much is the, the most OG villain of the Naruto Shippuden series. He uh, was brought in, uh, in Shippuden to be like the perfect villain. So, I mean, backstory of him, Madara Uchiha, he is uh, known as like the ghost of the Uchiha. He is the co other founder of the hidden leaf village with hashirama and known as like his forever rival and because of that it's he is a reincarnation of the sage of six past sons with hashirama being the other one so it's like they always are destined to as like sasuke and naruto or the other reincre- reincarnations so he is uh, again he's og uchiha yeah he pretty much was the main villain throughout the whole Shippuden series getting everything going from the moment that he faked his death after the last fallout with the first Hokage and has been slowly working behind the scenes to try and do his infinite Tsukiyomi which bottom line is his idea of a perfect world is nobody can move (laughs) nobody could do anything you can't fuck up if you can't do anything and so that's his perfect world, his piece there. Put him in pods and let him sleep. Um, and so he obviously was not successful in the beginning, um, but he eventually, all his planning, his meticulous planning to get everything through, to activate his Renegon, to get people to gather the tail, the tailed beast for him, become the ten tier Jinchiriki. He is a very long con kind of guy he plans it out he's a meticulous planner um and yeah that's pretty much it he's <laughs> he grew up in a time of war constantly fighting the senju clan to then somehow becoming best friends with their leader but yeah, he is an uchiha and uh, the curse of the the uchiha so it's pretty much always destined to have that overbearing emo side. <laughs> indeed, indeed. It, yeah, it's kind of funny too, because like if you wouldn't have had that fallout with like Hashirama, I'm sure he probably would have became the second Hokage and the story would have been much different. But nah, he, he's got this other plan. He wants to put the whole world to sleep and he Fs off and then Toby Rama becomes the the second Okage and basically he dooms his clan because the Ochiha just uh, end up being essentially like, uh, I guess blacklisted pretty much. Yeah, yeah. blacklisted. Like, they're they're kind of treated crappy in the uh, the Leaf Village at least until well 
at least till they all die but <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how you could get worse than that but yeah <laughs> till they're all murked but <laughs> yeah. it's like man uh, this can't get worse dodgy's <laughs> like well <laughs> i can help well, with that well i, I don't Gonzo. know i mean by uh by madara's logic uh what's what's uh what's better than everybody sleeping <laughs> basic yeah, may it mess up if you're not moving around like that's like ultimate villain backstory right there if you think about it yeah. but he's a he's a hero in his own mindset basically if everybody's dead nobody can fuck up exactly <laughs> like he, he uses the word sleep but like artificially dead <laughs> Well, isn't it like they're technically getting put in these pods and then they're like chakras getting siphoned off of them until they probably are dead. Yeah, well, he thinks that they're just going to be like sleeping in like dream worlds um, of their own in this right. like happy world or whatever. But the reality is, is it's that till all of their chakras absorb for the chakra fruit and then then they're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny that you say that you uh, I don't think he would become the second Hokage, though. Still, you don't I think just, so? Because it was um, it was the voting system how they became a Hokage, uh, and he wasn't yeah. likable. He That's just true. wasn't a likable guy. That's like his thing is that he was ridiculously strong, and like the only person who really liked him was Hashirama. I didn't realize it was it. a voting system. I thought it was the the last Hokage appointed the next Hokage. I think they can kind of like make that suggestion, yeah. but I, I think it's voted on by the bill, or at least it was voted on at that point. That's that's how Hashirama became the, the first Okage, is it got voted. And Did he get Madara voted? Lost. I thought, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. But so yeah. he's a little salty. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I thought that he appointed Toby Rama and then Toby Rama appointed uh, what's his name, the third Hokage. What I'm is a, his name? It's a good question. The asshole man who treated Naruto like shit. Yeah. yeah that guy. <laughs> that guy. Uh, and then I thought he appointed uh, both um, Naruto's dad as well as Minato as well as... Um... Oh, man. My brain is not on at this time. Or like Tsunade. Tsunade, yeah. Kage, yeah. Uh, I don't I think it's a voting system. I, I think there's like... Yeah, obviously you have to be ridiculously strong, but I think if it's between the running of it, like that's how it was settled in that sense. And I, because I, that's where I thought the whole Uchiha thing started getting all like, like butt hurt. Who is voted for he, Tsunade? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, I mean, she's she's Ashirama's blood. I mean, at the end of the day, if you you got his blood in you, you're practically like ninja royalty. They're like, you know who we need running this village? A raging drunk. Perfect. Yeah, game, with a gambling problem. <laughs> with a gambling. <laughs> just gonna gamble away the whole village. She just sells the village to like the, the cloud or something. Yeah, for right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was, uh, up, I was up and then I lost it all. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're enslaved to the cloud, guys. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, okay. So Madara's powers. So basically what power does Madara not have is probably like the better question here. Like he has Seriously. Oh, so many. He can't, he can't talk no jutsu. Can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's that's true he he doesn't he only knows how to talk with these fists yeah. <laughs> uh yeah he's super skilled in taijutsu he is um he knows like crazy amounts of ninjutsu including like after he got the hashirama cells he can do like wood style jutsu and creates like the thousand fist like wood statue or whatever that hashirama uses um he do 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 he he also is like very adept in um ninju or in uh genjutsu and uh has the rinnegan as well as he has the whatchamacallit um the upgraded sharigan 
um, Mim Gekyo. Yeah, the Mon Gekyo Shuriken. So Mon Gekyo. Yeah. yeah, and then he eventually becomes the uh, Jinjuriki of the Ten Tails and has all the power of that too. So like. I'm I'm sure that the list of his powers is much longer than the list of powers he doesn't have. Just like put it this way. Any jutsu you've seen used in the series, he can probably do if he wants to. <laughs> probably, yeah. yeah. He's probably like he's just a genius when it comes to that. He has these ridiculous <laughs> chakra reserves. And yeah, like you mentioned, when he gets a ten tail, then he has a complete yin and yang. He's got that invisible clone thing. So he's got the like little black balls that fly around. Oh yeah. So I mean he's he's practically loaded. <laughs> he's, he's loaded. Yeah. I'm assuming he could probably do the Amaterasu too if he wants to. Yeah, I don't see why not. Uh, I don't think that's like a specific thing. Yeah. What's their like big uh like barrier like what oh, that big it? ass purple one, the, yeah. like the, the perfect one. That I mean, I, I guess he would makes three clones and the perfect like four point barrier thing. Yeah, no, no, no. What's uh the they have like the which it's that they create like the the gigantic humans that they like sit inside. Oh, the Susano. Yeah, the Susano. He's also got the Susano. That's probably worth note. And the Susano is super badass too. Yeah, and his pretty yeah, so that like the perfect one. I mean, yeah. he's I mean again, he's just he's loaded and he's been preparing for years when he got reincarnated. He, he pretty much took control back right from the get-go yeah. and forced uh we forced Obito pretty much to bring him back to life completely. Yeah, yeah. So he had like the Renegon and then he <laughs> That, that's actually so funny kind of how that goes like he has the renegon as like reincarnation and then he forces obito to bring him back to life and then once he's brought back to life he loses his renegon because his actual renegon exists in the world already because you know obito has it at the time and uh then he uh he just kind of like does his thing and he's just like blind for a little bit and just keeps slapping people even while blind without eyes. And then, uh, then he, yeah. then he, he goes and reclaims his eyes and becomes the 10 tail jerky all while blind. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he take Kakashi's shower gun too? He might've. Yeah. Yeah. I think he snatched his eye too. Yeah. I mean, he's just snatching eyes everywhere. <laughs> I, 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 it just reminds me of it's the, like Donzo, uh, really. It, it just reminds me of the memes that they have where it's just like, um, what should I call it? Uh, Uchiha eyes in Naruto, and it just has like an eye on like a light bulb, and it just like pretends that they're like screw and screw out like a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah. it's like, how is it it's like so easy? There's never any blood, just pull it in, pull it out. <laughs> yeah, they have the technique down. They're just like eyeball snatch <laughs> and implant. <laughs> uh, I just want to know how they've like never squished one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Throughout the entire series, there's there's never an unsuccessful implant where they're like, oh, we we broke that one. Yeah, they just like accidentally they crack it open, or when they're putting it in, there's like goop coming down his face. <laughs> just shouting, God, oh no. <laughs> Oh well, that was a waste of a Renegon eye, damn it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh well, we should talk about his relationships with characters. I think the most notable one we've already kind of touched on is Hashirama, his greatest rival. And uh they have the showdown, you know, Hashirama, you know, before Madara becomes all like super powered because he spends all the years kind of perfecting his plan while he grows super super old and then before he eventually dies um you know back in his younger days him and hashirama would duke it out quite a bit you know hashirama would use the thousand hands of spanking jutsu on him with his big wooden hands <laughs> <laughs> uh, madara would blow flames at him it was it was a good time it was a good time 
Um, they they battled so hard that they actually made statues of them at uh, what what they call that place. You remember what that like waterfall was called? Uh, something Valley. Uh, yeah. Fire Valley. Yeah. Man, it's it's you know it's funny. Like I mentioned, it's it, it's it's 2021. We're last talking about when he was in this is 2016. Yeah. So five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's there's so much Naruto so fresh. Verse too. <laughs> there's so much Naruto stuff. But anyways, they they both have statues in that valley. Uh, which is a very kind of main focal point of the Naruto series. Like Sasuke and uh, Naruto essentially start their fight there and they, they kind of end their fight there too. So, you know, um, yeah. And they were both reincarnations of uh, which is named sons. The, the Sage of the Six Fast Sons. Yeah. yeah. The Sage so of was the it Six Azura Fast. and Izura? Yeah. Yeah. I would argue, I mean, obviously, like, Naruto and Sasuke have, like, surpassed it now, but, like, they were probably the strongest of the two, especially, like, Madara. Like, Madara kind of, like, slinked into that cave and, like, expanded his life and uh, spent many years just kind of, like, chilling and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And, like, yeah, I mean, Hashirama, obviously, like, a beast of his own, but... I think in most cases, like the, the pair was always pretty evenly matched, but Madara kind of like devised his plan and slunk into his cave for a little bit and uh, came out stronger because of it because Hashirama died. Don't they usually always like die at the same time too or something like that? Hmm. I thought that was part of it. Maybe I'm so. wrong, I mean, but... wouldn't, uh, wouldn't surprise me. I mean, yeah. the thing is, yeah, you even said, like, so it, kind of how you said he slinked into his cave. And I think that was, like, the, the factor with their side of the reincarnation is that yeah. they're supposed to be just naturally gifted on their side, yeah. where the other side focuses more on power through friendship and building and training and all of that. And so that's why that side tends to always overpower, like, the Uchiha side pretty much, like, yeah. or reincarnations, because, like, they depend strictly really on themselves, yeah. And the power of friendship is what it's about. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's like an important determining factor is like Madara's planning makes him stronger than Hashirama in the end. I think also like worth note, um, his relationship with like Toby Rama, Toby Rama kills his brother or mortally wounds his brother. And then, you know, Madara kind of finishes it off by, taking his eyes because his brother is like you're going blind take my eyes and you know that gets the wheels turning of getting madara to be super super strong um combined with like he eventually gets the hashirama cells to complete his sharigan into a renegade um yeah but i just i, I think toby rama basically caused all the events uh, of the entire naruto show because like he was such a racist piece of crap that he's just like, I hate the Uchiha. The Uchiha suck. And like, like essentially like exiled them into like outside the village. So he's like, you could be the police force. Yeah. You'd be, and um, after I've murdered thousands of your people, I, I don't want to see your faces. Get out of here. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, he never trusted them from the get go. No, and he, the only he only played along because his brother made him. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, he did not uh, he did not embody Hashirama's will at all. Hashirama wanted them to be equals, and yeah, I think uh, I think it would have been a lot different had uh, had a Uchiha ever been you know a Hokage. Like I said, like I I would have thought that you know had Madara not disappeared that he would have became the second Hokage I mean if it wasn't a voting system if it was a voting system obviously he was not very well liked but you know given the fact that let's say Hashirama would have been able to appoint him then you know it could have gone like Senzu Uchiha Senzu Uchiha it could have been a little bit more equal but 
because it wasn't basically got the whole uh whole plot line rolling it started the uh the seeds of evil uh right there in that so you can but that think... being said could could an uchiha even become an okage though given their whole like curse of the uchiha you know given that to be a Hokage, you pretty much have to be like the strongest in the village at that time, right? And in order to do that as an Uchiha, you're gonna you're gonna have to activate your Sharingan gun like at least a few times there. And you're gonna have to get that Mengekyo, and you're not gonna do it in a, a very friendly way that people are gonna really like to like, you know, have you just walking around the street like, oh hey, how's it going? You know, you killed your brother <laughs> you know, <laughs> while he was sleeping. And now you're our, like practically our president. So um, <laughs> I think uh, good day. <laughs> I, I think Sasuke's dad was almost the Hokage. He was in the running. Wasn't he uh, Minato, Minato's like shadow? Yeah. Wasn't yeah. his. Uh, so like that's yeah. the thing. They stay the shadows. But the, the issue is, is like the more powerful they get, the more kind of fucked up in the head they get. Yeah. So it's kind of scary thinking having somebody like that running running the joint i think he was pretty powerful even without the man gekyo and like i think i i think he was pretty close to to being the hokage i think minato ended up taking it in the end um but i think like the odds were pretty good that he could have got it i mean oh no for sure he was like ridiculously yeah. strong but i i think it had to do with the fact that doesn't he also part of like the Uchiha coup? Uh, or is that after he? After I think that was after. I think that was started yeah. because he wasn't the Hokage. I think like I, yeah, they, they would, did make I, I him the Hokage, the, and then the Uchiha clan was all pissed off about it. So then they started the coup. Gotcha. Could also be when they reappointed the third back, you know, instead of just making a new one. You know, once right. the fourth died, they're like, all right, well, let's have a fifth Hokage. And they're like, mm, no. We still got the third here. We still, you know, the guy that treated people like absolute garbage. Let's bring him back. <laughs> yeah, he he's probably my least favorite Hokage. Yeah, definitely. I think a like, lot of things could have, like how you said with Toby Rama, he, definitely a lot of things he did caused a lot of events. But I think with the third, it's the same. A lot of things that he did could have been avoided. For he one, just, Orochimaru could have been avoided. Yeah, he's just so <laughs> passive. He just kind of let Orochimaru do his thing. He kind of just let, like, Itachi murder the entire Uchiha clan. He kind of just let Donzo just kind of chill. He knew Donzo was doing sketchy shit, but he just he just let Donzo well, do sketchy Donzo shit. Donzo was the reason that Uchiha, or Itachi killed all Uchiha. Yeah. He was the reasoning, so he was a complete, I, it's like... He was like, Donzo's like, fuck you. I don't like you. I don't trust you. He's like, all right, well, how about I give you your own Ambu? How about how about that? Would that make you happy? He's like, no, but I'll take it anyways. <laughs> He's like, yeah, this is not going to bite me in the ass later on. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's exactly it. Is he just like, basically, if you were evil, the third Hokage is like, here, have all these fun toys. And if you're just like a sweet, innocent child like Naruto, it's like you get neglection. You get nothing. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> How dare you're you evil? Have it's a like here, let me <laughs> take everything. Please don't be evil. No, I'm still evil. Dang it. Dang it. Ah, ah, darn, darn, such darn. Such darn. <laughs> such darn. <laughs> Pretty much dang. <laughs> dang. <laughs> but uh, well, all right. So go. I mean, going back though to like with well, relationships like with Madara and stuff too. So you got the Senju, but then you got um how we mentioned so like obito his little to his little prodigy or minion i guess is more more what he looks at him as and you know saved obito from what he thought was going to be his death and kind of raised him to take over uh his overall plan to take over his name until he got reincarnated back or you know, brought back to life there and uh it, it was just he he used that same mental fucked upness of the Uchiha's to manipulate him into you know continuing everything uh, where he had then black zetsu with him as well to kind of help 
keep that along and, and move it along and pretty much take care of him until he, he died himself. Can we talk the about how time. Madara is like the best mentor ever? Because I think it was like a three year period of time from when Obito died and was saved by Madara. And like at the time he was weaker than Kakashi and like like a fairly weak ninja. Like he was like what a Genin or something like that still. Um and mm. he went from Genin, and three years later he was fighting the fourth Hokage and he tamed the nine tails fox. <laughs> seriously like, like with like fake limbs like that yeah he put him through some serious physical therapy first and <laughs> all this made sure took way better care than the third hokage did with naruto i keep saying <laughs> it and you know and that's kind of like you know i think where he became such a strong figure to obito too is that you know he practically saved him and then raised him new and gave him new abilities and powers and possibilities so you know he was looking up to him more and he could have developed into a father figure to him where Madara, in my opinion had absolutely zero feelings for this kid whatsoever i mean he, he literally had one i think one person he had actual like love in his heart for was his brother and that was it like i don't think he technically loved hashirama as a brother i think he just thought of him as like the best possible rival that at towards the end, you know, well, well, towards the end when he was pretty much then dying for like the 15th time when he had the 10 tails taken out of him and the, the statue taken out of him, he was like, Oh, you know, I, I realized I was wrong. Like, like every Naruto villain right before they die. <laughs> Talk no jutsu, man. Talk no yeah. jutsu. And then, uh, but speaking of no talking him and guy, probably one of the best fights in the Shippuden history guy going full eight gate on him and might not love him, but he acknowledged guy being the strongest. And that hit that hit. I've always been a guy and Lee fan. Um, so seeing him go absolutely ape shit bananas on Madara, you know, talking about a thousand hands right there. He was giving him hands, feet, everything. And, and Madara knew it. He knew he was, he was he was absolutely fucked. It's just he he lasted a little longer. Yeah. Giggity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Giggity. Yeah. No, that was <laughs> that was that was epic. That's uh I wonder if they'll bring the eighth gate eight gate back for Lee. I wonder if there'll be a point in Baruto where they're like, Lee, use the eighth gate to do this, run it back for us. That'd be pretty sweet. That would be sick. Yeah. But then we would lose Lee. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Guy's still alive. He's just in a wheelchair. True. I mean, yeah, but that I mean, does I guess if Naruto can do that again, yeah. can he? Uh, probably not. Probably not. But uh, I mean, he still has his, all of those same powers. It's just yeah. if he could, he could feel like he First of all, like, why didn't he do that with his arm? Yeah, yeah. No, give Kakashi think... an eye. <laughs> <laughs> he did give Kakashi an eye. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's hard to say. I, I just don't think he could. Maybe he could, but I mean, even if we lose Lee and Baruto, like, eh, he's not really doing much. Like, <laughs> right, that's true. I think he's just like how they they. You know, it's still Baruto, so it's these yeah. these old gens can't shine too much. See, that's where I disagree. I think we need more old gens shining. <laughs> oh, I would love that, but it just doesn't seem like that. That's where you know it's a whole new new series. You could say got, the same we have Naruto with, to shine for a little bit. You could say the same with Guy, though. Like Guy. Guy, I mean, he didn't have his own series beforehand, but you know, the Lee's role in um, Baruto is similar to Guy's role in Naruto in a lot of ways, right? So, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, so. but we needed a lot more character development back then, so we had some awesome <laughs> characters brought in. 
<laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. What do you like about Madara? Um, I mean, you know me. I love the, I love the bad guys. And I like bad guys who are just straight bad guys. I don't, I don't, no, no talk jutsus. If they, they can surpass that, then I'm, I like them a lot. And in this case, he's pretty much as bad as you can get. I mean, according to the creator, he was the perfect villain. He had no weaknesses. He was a perfect, in his eyes, anti-hero too. You know, thinking that he was doing was right in his sense. Um, I mean, he's the other half of a coin, literally. And he just absolutely just wrecks it. He came up to the fourth Shinobi Alliance, looked him dead in the eyes, and just said, come get it. (laughs) (laughs) Those poor ninja, they didn't even know what they were getting into. Yeah. Honorable mention, though, like I said to that, that first guy who ran towards Madara, <laughs> either he was just the dumbest guy out there or he was just like, wow, I already shit my pants. Might as well go at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did, did not end well for him. Did not end well. <laughs> uh, yeah, Madara slap. I like Madara's powers. I think Madara had one of the coolest power sets. I mean, obviously, like I sl- said, like what power didn't he have but i just think when he's like fighting all of the hokage and he's just like slapping them and just like flex flexing the like sheer ability of what his powers can do that's like so badass i love that you're right he is very much the perfect villain other than like the fact that he was gullible and he was getting uh he's getting uh played the whole time he didn't even know it that is true yeah, he was getting played the whole time. Yeah. What, and do you, what do you dislike about the character? I would say I would dislike about him is pretty much what I dislike about most of the OGS. Is <laughs> they're just a bunch of crybaby little bitches. And I'm sorry <laughs> for anybody who's you know on, on team Huchiha there, but they are a little crybaby little bitches. And oh, I did get my way. I'm going to destroy the world now. Okay. (laughs) Grown ass man, my ass. (laughs) It's so funny you say that too, because that's, that's exactly what Sasuke does the whole series. He's like, well, I I mean, I guess his family was murdered. So like, he got (laughs) it. Oh, I guess his family was murdered. Okay, Uh, I guess that will put a damper in your life. He's just, (laughs) he's just so sad though. Like I don't know, Naruto grew up without a family too, and Naruto was bullied, and Naruto saw saw hope, and Sasuke is like, no, everyone must die. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill everyone. Nobody deserves to live. Same same with Madara. Carnations. Yeah, Yeah, same with Madara. That's why they are who they are. you just lose one brother, just 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 one brother, and most of your clan gets murdered. And you're like, I, I gotta murder the entire world. <laughs> uh only some he's just, yeah, he's a little, there. He's a little he's a little dramatic, we'll say. He's just a little <laughs> dramatic. I like how we say that. It's like, yeah, he like why I don't know why he would be so sad and so dramatic. He only watched his brother die in his hands. Like, no, no trauma right, there at all. Hashirama's brother got murdered by Uchiha too, you know, in his family. The thing is, you know, in the ninja world, I mean, who doesn't have a family member that wasn't murdered at some point or another? That's true. They just died. need to get so, over it. They just need to get over it. I mean, but seriously, like, come on, bro. It's like you were literally offered, you're you're the co-creator of like the best village in all of the ninja world, you know, really next to like the the ninja god is your best friend technically or rival. And it's like you're living out the dream. If you just like, you know what? All right, maybe I'm not number one, but like I live in an awesome mansion. I live awesome. No, there's peace. It's great. All of this. Maybe I'll be a little friendly to some people and they might make me the second one. Nope. He said, fuck you. I'm out. <laughs> I choose violence. <laughs> I choose lots of violence. Oh. I think for me, what I dislike about the character kind of goes back to him getting played is like they paint him as this like ultimate villain. Like 
the series should have ended with the fight against him. And of course, no, they had to like sprinkle it in. It's like, oh, well, he was playing Obito. Well, guess what? Kaguya was playing him through Black Zanetsu. Triple tier inception. Like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Like, how many? It's like, a con within a con. <sighs> yeah. I'm like, how many final villains can they have? It's like, Obito, the final villain. Jokes, Madara, the final villain. Jokes, Kaguya, the final villain. It's like, oh my God. Just get, get it over with. Just have a final villain. Like, I, I'm tired of this, like, pyramid system villain scheme that we have at the end here <laughs> like that final boss in a game that has like six different versions of him they have to keep hitting those life bars and if you mess up one you gotta start it all over again <laughs> that is basically what it was it, it just felt like the pyramid scheme of final villains though <laughs> It did. It's like the, that. Those last bits of that war, like the Shippuden arc, it's like you also just got the most extreme upgrades for Naruto and Sasuke and, and like yeah. Akashi and Guy and you know all of these. So it's like they just were amping it all to eleven. They're like, oh shit, we only can like make like sixteen more episodes. All right, just ramp it all up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's what it was like too. Is like. Oh, like these characters that are already super overpowered within the last hundred episodes. Uh, well, you know, it, it's been less than 24 hours, but ooh, plot hole, more power. Ooh, another plot hole, more power. It's like they just like keep getting powered up. It's like these guys are tired. They've been awake for like 48 hours fighting nonstop. They've gone through all these tiers of villains. Like, can we just talk about the fatigue they're going through for a second before, like, some random plot hole jumps up to superpower them again? Like, <laughs> seriously, the the infinite Sukiyomi was probably like very nice for them. Like, they're in this dream, they get taken out. They're like, dude, come on, just like five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, I, I haven't slept it in weeks. Just please, please, please let me just sleep. <laughs> But I mean, so yeah, I I agree with you on that. Like, it's like they painted yeah. him to be this amazing villain, super smart, and all that, and then boom, what a twist! You know, it's like M Night yeah. Shyamalan threw in another little twist at the end, and yeah. which was, I mean, hey, it wasn't bad, yeah. in my opinion, because it's like it was kind of cool that the Zetsu was like the whole play on this guy. Guy, his yeah. whole goal was just trying to mix the, these two genes. So that he could recreate Kaguya and yeah, it worked. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it worked. It, it wasn't bad. It flowed nicely. It just felt like a lot when it was like, okay, well, Madara was playing Obito, but mm-hmm. Kaguya slash Black Zanetsu was playing Madara as just like, oh my God, like, hey, <laughs> just, just, just pick a final villain, stick with it. <laughs> Uh, right well I, then yeah. it's like baruto we find out oh wait no she's an alien and <laughs> she ran away or whatever you're like all right all right oh she was actually the we good throwing alien. shurikens <laughs> to yeah we, we went from like show, throwing shurikens to like throwing meteors now <laughs> <laughs> but actually but actually literally yeah uh, oh how do you personally relate to the character of madara Well, I mean, some people have told me I have a little bit of a temper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've been told that on occasion. So I, mean, I could say that, um, you know, I could, I'm, I'm very like, I could be very logical and meticulous and dirt certain things. And then I could like let the emotion get to me a little bit there. And then bring it back down. Now, I, I haven't made any plans to destroy the world or anything just yet. Um, you know, but, you know, we'll see. The, still still young. <laughs> I was going to say, are, are you in a Chia sad boy uh, in heart? Or is, is that what's happening right now? Is like, I'm going to say something wrong in this episode. And it's just be like, your plots to destroy the world are just going to start here. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm more of like Kiba's side, you know, I, I just like the dogs, you know, I play with my ninja dogs, 
<laughs> you know, I like the Nara clan too. Just kind of uh, vibe. <laughs> just kind of vibe. Fair, fair. Uh, I don't know how I personally relate to Madara. This one's a hard one for me. I definitely feel like the meticulous planning side of things at some points in time. I think uh, I definitely like to to play the long game. Um, I, I I think yeah, that's you know, as I say that, I think that's kind of where it comes to mind. Is I feel like you know. He wasn't as strong as Hashirama right off the bat, but he played the long game. He kept getting stronger over time and he didn't rush things. He had like admirable patience, whereas, you know, like he's like, oh, I'm not stronger than Hashirama now, but I'm going to take my time getting stronger and stronger and stronger until I'm the strongest. So I think that's kind of where I personally relate is like, you know, I'm, I'm not the strongest right now, but I'm willing to be patient and keep slowly and meticulously growing towards being the strongest until i'm there so yeah I like that's, that yeah that's mine yeah that just came to me that was perfect what's your favorite scene with madara <laughs> i'd probably say my my favorite scene is probably going to be where he like what first saw hashirama on the battlefield got like super stoked and excited he's like yeah finally we're gonna fight and hashirama's like shut the fuck up I'm busy right now. <laughs> Thousand hands of Spanx. Yeah, and, he, and he's just like, you need to stop right now. I'm, I need to take care of this. And he's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, man. Hashirama, he speaks, they listen. So <laughs> That's true. I think that That's was true. Either, it was either between that one or where uh, he like first took an Obito. And he's like, you know, bottom line, like, you know, you stay here and he'll take care of you. You know, I am an old man. He'll take care of me. And Obito was pretty much like, what do you need me to like help you go to the bathroom? Madara was like, be nice. <laughs> be nice. <laughs> uh, geriatric so home. <laughs> yeah. So nothing you have to do with him fighting or anything serious. I like the the jokey stuff on him because it's just it's it's th- so thrown off, you know. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I think for me, it's definitely the fight against Guy. That's just so so badass. Just one of the most memorable scenes. Maybe more to do with Guy than Madara because Madara kind of just gets spanked for thirty seconds. But <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> like but a st- champ yeah yeah (laughs) that's why it's my favorite either that or him fighting all of the uh all the hokage because he basically just slaps all the hokage for for a couple episodes he's he's just playing he's not even trying oh yeah i think he's super cocky he's like do you do you want my clones to also do a susano he just (laughs) yeah it's like i'm not even trying yeah do you want all of my clones to do a susano because i can do that for you i can i can do that and they're like what the <laughs> this guy's just playing with us like we're giving everything we got and this guy's just just playing a game <laughs> if you think about it like after that fight so like i mean he legit like straight up just murderized them right <laughs> and he wasn't even as strong as then and so, like, after this war and after this fight and after all this stuff, like, you you pretty much, like, have Naruto, Sasuke, I mean, to an extent, even Sakura, uh, you know, Lee, all of these that had these, or Ten Ten, even with her, like, legendary items now. They have these, like, even Ten Ten. Yeah. Even Ten Ten. But, all right, so they have all of this after the war. And you think about it, now the adults, these Hokage who got completely slapped around, like, how are they going to have any kind of authoritative figure towards, like, these these kids now? Be like, all right, I'm going to send you on this B-rank mission. And they're like, bet. You, you're going <laughs> to send me on this A-rank mission, and I'm going to need my money ahead of time. <laughs> like, what's the not going to do? Like, remember when it was half of you over there, and then half of you was over there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Even, like, after the pain arc, when, like, Nagisho just absolutely decimates the village, there's nothing Tsunade can do, and they basically just have to wait for, like, Naruto to come save the day. Like, they they really lose their authority over Naruto. They basically have to trick him to go train to get him out of the war. They're like, nobody tell Naruto Seriously. about the war. Like... <laughs> 
what's funny about it is like so he's older as a hokage and he has like shadow shadow clones literally everywhere doing everything man you think he would just figure that out later on in life or earlier on in life and just be like nah i don't want to do that you go ahead you, you do that for me <laughs> I mean, he gets like, all the training from it if you think about it like it's all the experience i mean like th- that makes sense but you also have to remember that naruto is kind of a dummy throughout the entire series so oh yeah for sure that's that's <laughs> how they keep them grounded there yeah <laughs> yeah like he, he doesn't even like realize that till like later in the series like when he's training with uh with Kakashi and Kakashi is like, okay, we're going to go play like rock, paper, scissors out in this forest here with your shadow clone. And then we're going to like disappear. And he's like, Oh, I remember the results of the shadow clones. He's like, how have you not realized this to this point? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just getting all so these smart. memories. Uh, that you don't yeah. even remember. <laughs> and he's so smart, like on the spot, like adapting in battle and everything. And it's just yeah. like, but he's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's that dumb blonde in him. <laughs> it's the it's that just dumb overpowered main character, you know. Yeah. yeah. Naruto, Goku, you, know, you they can't be super smart or like then they're like yeah, light Yagami and Death Note, and yeah, it goes a little differently. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Also, I like that you just have the flu flaying in your background there at the door. <laughs> the what? Oh. A gigantic <laughs> floof just sprawled out <laughs> oh hi puppy <laughs> what uh what lessons can you take about moder take for moder about life and or fitness well patience is is very important yeah. patience and you know uh, you don't need that instant gratification uh, it takes time for things like so you're developing in fitness you know you're working out you obviously I mean, we preach this all the time you're not going to get instant results it's going to take time it's going to take planning you know you're going to have to do things you don't like doing or things that seem meticulous but it's, it's part of the process um you know if somebody does you wrong maybe don't beat the shit out of them that's a good thing too <laughs> um but uh, yeah, I mean, I would just say taking away is like overall, yeah, he's a bad guy in all of this, but more of he was his own hero in his sense or what he thought was going to stop all these problems. And he spent years and years and years doing it. So, you know, it's not going to take you years and years to get your results, hopefully, you know, if you're, if you're doing it right. But time. Yeah. Patience. No, exactly. I think patience is the one that comes to mind for me too. Like if Madara can like hide out in that cave and be geriatric for years and years and years to make his plans come to fruition, you you can, you can, you can wait a few months or a few years to get that dream bond, like, or strength level or whatever your goal is, like whatever you're working towards, like it's not going to happen in a couple of weeks. It's not going to happen in a couple of months. Like it does in a lot of times take years and years of work. So especially if you want to do something great, like, like dep- the more ambitious your goal is, the more, the more years it's going to take, right? Like if your goal is to be the best in the world at something, yeah, that's going to take a lot of effing years. Like Madara wanted to be the best ninja in the world. So he could put everybody to sleep for his like goal of like world peace that took him a lot of planning and a lot of work and a lot of things to, to make that happen. So, you know, if your goal is to be the number one powerlifter in the world or the number one strongman or the number one bodybuilder or whatever it is, like past just something a little bit more casual as a goal, that's, that's not going to happen in a year or like two years. Like that's going to take years and years of work. You got to be patient. Yeah. And you got to keep up with it. I mean, you got to even if you don't want to be the number one of anything and you want to get to a certain result where you want to look at, let's look a certain way, weigh a certain amount or run a certain speed. You know, once you get there, you, sh- you got to maintain too. You can't just get there and then suddenly stop what you're doing as well. That's true. So, and also now I just thought about though, you're talking about how I mean, this man lived a ridiculous amount of time. So like technically Hashirama died way before Madara died. Yeah. And so maybe that's why the reincarnation took so long. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, because he was around for when Obi, so the third Okage and the fourth Okage was at that point uh, a Joni. Yeah. So, yeah. damn, man, it was old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because the fourth Hokage Minato was still the Hokage when when Madara died. So. I think Orochimaru is probably older than him now, though. I don't get it. Why didn't he just do what Orochimaru did instead of just like doing that and just transfer himself to be younger each time? Yeah. That, that's a good question. I mean, in theory, maybe he could have, but maybe he's like, no, my body is the ultimate one. I don't want any of these scum trash bodies. <laughs> could be. I want, I want my body. If you think about it, like, even though he died and then was reincarnated and then had to be, like, brought back to life, like, he technically Wasn't achieved. His body. He, he kind of achieved what, like, Orochimaru was trying to do. Like, Orochimaru wanted to collect like every jutsu and like basically Madara had every jutsu already like he didn't need to take over other people's bodies to get other jutsu he just needed a long seated plan in order to uh to you know bring himself back to life in his prime so he could make things do also he never wanted wanted to be immortal that was his thing yeah he wants to be immortal and Madara much. didn't. Madara just wanted yeah. world peace. He just right. He he himself was a tool to make that happen. He felt he was the only person that could make that happen, and the only way to make that happen was for him to be the most powerful being, which all came down to his planning of being brought back to life. So he didn't need to be alive during that time, right? So right. whereas Orochimaru he... came from greed, he just he wanted every jutsu and he wanted to be immortal. So. I don't even think Madara even part of his plan though was to get resurrected. Yes, it? it was. Cause, yeah. Because I mean Yeah. Yeah, it was because uh Nagito was supposed to be the one that reincarnated him and then Nagito ah, wasted right. it on the, the leaf village. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Because I was like, wait, because Kabuto just uh, he reincarnated or almost reincarnated Madara to like play with Obito. Like, I know you're not Madara. Because yeah. that's obviously Marlora right there. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. yeah. So it was just supposed to be sooner than later. Yeah. Yeah. Man, good thing it wasn't. Woo! They would have <laughs> slapped around. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but no doubt. on the bright side, imagine I saw something. Imagine Madara was still around when the was it the aliens from Boruto, Katsuki or whatever their name is, um, the alien bunny people, is what I call them. And the alien bunny people, if they came and Madara was like pretty much a 10 tailed Cherokee, whew, he would totally wipe the floor with them because he was like reincarnating Naruto, Sasuke, the first Okage, the fourth Okage. You best believe there would be some, that would be a sick fight. <laughs> Quick that fight, but sick. That would be a sick fight. <laughs> Amazing. Where can people find you, Zach? Instagram. TikTok, YouTube, ZachBot55. Sweet. Sweet. And then, sweet. oh yeah, so then Just Saying Odin, uh, Olympus, and then Arms Race Nutrition, Zach10. Yeah. Yeah. You just got in a bunch of Arms Race stuff, didn't you? Oh yeah. Oh man, I've been trying them all. So I like, yeah. I'm really, I'm really digging their pre and their protein. Uh, I, I like chocolate. I, like I'm on a super big chocolate kick right now. Nice. So, nice. What's your what's your favorite solid. flavor of their pre workout? The favorite, uh, I like. It's called a uh, Big Sky, and okay. it, it it's literally the only reason I like it is because the picture is a wolf. If you want me to be honest, it's as <laughs> simple as that. Flavor to me is is not relevant. <laughs> <laughs> that's the flavor of pre workout is Big Sky, and they have a picture of a wolf. Yep. <laughs> amazing you gotta try it that's the thing it's people are uh, like wait what it's what, what flavor is it yes nobody knows it's a flavor yes. <laughs> it is a, amazing <laughs> what's your code on that if people want to go pick that up again for arms race it's zach z-a-c-k and then number 10 zach 10 cool cool 
arms raise nutrition zach 10 get that big sky pre-workout i like it and i got some samples too of the of the free and protein so at least if you're in the u.s i'm sorry max but <laughs> i i'll be sending them out so hit me up if you want some before they're gone let's try them out <laughs> yeah if if there isn't 45 dollars worth of shipping to get it to canada <laughs> Seriously, it's like this big. It'll be $45. Just cover shipping. (laughs) Just cover shipping. Yeah. $45 for for a sample of pre-workout. You can get a whole tub for that. It's actually cheaper though from them. Like their international shipping is is not not that bad. I think it's well for Canada right now. I thought it was 45 when I looked. Really? Yeah. That's oh I thought it was like in the 20s or something like that. Yeah, I was say, gonna order not a bad for there. I was gonna order some, but it was like $45 shipping. I was like, fuck. <laughs> Just order it next time you're, you're down in the yeah. States. Dude, yeah, like literally with me. I ordered it and I got a confirmation email. Five minutes later, I got the shipping email. I was like, <laughs> what? And it was Black Friday sale. And I was like, yeah. they're on top of that. Yeah. They knew what I wanted yeah. before I wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> They just have a box sitting there ready that with your yeah. name on it. This is Zach. They're like, this is what he's going to order next. Yeah. We know it. You got a little old lady in the back with like a, a crystal ball, just guessing yeah. their orders. Any you got that one right too. Check it out. <laughs> Anything with a wolf, yeah, Zach's going to order. Pretty much. <laughs> They're I'm, just I'm like simple like that. Put put everything with the wolf in a box. <laughs> yeah, the flavor is amazing though. I, I literally have no idea what's what like the combination of flavors are. Um, but <laughs> what it's, it actually it's good. tastes like, but it's, it's amazing. Good. I love it. I love it. Sweet. You guys can find me at Max Hall Fitness on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. You guys can follow the podcast on the Plus Ultra Fitness Podcast. And if you guys want to support the podcast, you guys can use the PayPal link below. Any support is much appreciated. Thank you guys for listening. Share this episode with a friend, you know, rate us on iTunes, rate us on Spotify. If there's a rating on Spotify, follow us on YouTube, give give a like, a comment and a subscribe on YouTube. We appreciate all the support, all the help for growing the podcast. You guys are amazing and have a plus ultra day and uh, attack your workout today. Like you would attack, like Madara attacked the entire united shinobi force yeah everybody (laughs) literally everybody (laughs) that is the energy you will bring into your workout today (laughs) peace out guys